we start our adventure in the back garden of a regular house on the edge of a small market town. But there is something different about this garden. It is home to a small observatory. As the Earth revolves at around a thousand miles an hour, making a single rotation in just under 24 hours, day turns to night and back again. On a clear night, the sky is a feast of tiny dots of light on their journey past the garden from east to west. By day, we see just one star, the Sun, a very average main sequence star that at around 4.6 billion years old is still only middle-aged. The Sun is the diameter of about 110 Earths. It has a surface temperature of some 5,800 Kelvin and is busy converting hydrogen to helium through nuclear fusion, a process that generates energy, a lot of energy. Light from the Sun takes just 8.3 minutes to travel the 150 million kilometers to us here on Earth. Without the energy and light from the sun, we simply would not survive. It is our life giver. By night, the garden enjoys a myriad of stars, suns to their own planetary systems, perhaps, or should that be certainly, supporting life of their own. It is surely stranger to imagine a universe where the Earth is the only place where life has evolved than it is to imagine all the possible forms that life could take across the vast expanse of the cosmos. Humans have arranged the night sky into areas known as constellations, and within them, asterisms, the shapes we have constructed by joining the dots, such as Orion the Hunter, Taurus the Bull, and Pegasus the Winged Horse, ridden by the Princess Andromeda. Shapes made from stars across the whole sky to help us navigate our way around. But where do all these stars come from? What magic spawns these life-giving balls of burning gas? Here we are in a stellar nursery, the Orion Nebula, that fuzzy patch below Orion's belt known as his sword. A vast expanse of gas and dust some 26 light years across and 1,300 light years away from Earth primarily formed of hydrogen gas, an emission nebula, glowing red as it is excited by the starlight within it. It is these gas clouds that coalesce and start to condense under their own gravitational force. A protostar is formed. Temperature and pressure increase until that crucial moment when the first hydrogen nuclei fuse together to create helium nuclei. The nuclear fusion rapidly spreads through the core of the ball of gas a new star is born. Clouds of gas, nebulae across the galaxy, are the birthplace of stars. Multitudes of stars born together as clusters as they start their own cosmic adventures. The nebulae are eroded by the winds that their nascent stars emit, pushing out the gas and dust to sculpt endless weird and beautiful shapes. The vast majority of a main sequence star's life, many millions of years, is spent fusing hydrogen to helium in happy hydrostatic equilibrium, where the inwards gravitational forces are balanced by the outwards radiation pressure of nuclear fusion. As the hydrogen fuel dwindles, gravity starts to win and the star is compressed. The core temperature and pressure increase, helium starts to fuse to heavier elements and the radiation pressure starts to increase again. The star swells to become a red giant, existing like this for many thousands of years. The night sky is awash with young, hot blue stars and older, cooler, orangey-red stars. The story from this point is different depending on the star's mass. Low-mass stars, like our own sun, will fuse elements as far as carbon. Eventually, the core will collapse under its own gravity to form a dense white dwarf star while the outer layers of material are blown out into space as a planetary nebula. Higher mass stars take a more dramatic route, fusing elements all the way to iron until the core collapses as a supernova with a huge release of energy that fuses the heaviest of elements and ejects material far out into the surrounding space, 
leaving an extremely dense neutron star, or in the highest mass cases, a black hole. The universe is a clumpy place. Our dense galaxy sits in a void of nearly nothing, just one atom per cubic meter. Travel across that empty space for about two and a half million light years, and we arrive at our nearest neighbor, the Andromeda Galaxy. A larger version of our own Milky Way, it is home to around a trillion stars that fill its 100,000 light year diameter. Like the Milky Way, it is a spiral galaxy. Our sun would reside about two thirds of the way out along a spiral arm. From there, the back garden observatory looks out into the surroundings to see hydrogen rich nebulae, all those stars and the galaxies beyond. The universe is expanding. 99.99% of galaxies are heading away from us. But the Andromeda galaxy is unusually rare. It is blue shifted, meaning that it is heading towards us. Well, really, we are heading towards it, pulled by its gravity, destined to collide, and at some incredible speed, about 110 kilometers per second, or 250,000 miles per hour. Don't worry though, space is vast and we are not expected to arrive at the Andromeda galaxy for another 3.8 billion years. And when we get there, the chances are most objects in the galaxies will just glide past each other. The strongest impact will come from gravitational forces. The two galaxies are expected to play out a dance until they merge into one larger galaxy. As we venture further out into space, we find more galaxies, galaxies everywhere, as far as the best instrument man has made can see. The hidden galaxy, at around 11 million light years from Earth, hidden by the plane of our own Milky Way, scattering the light as it passes through all that dust. M82, the Cigar Galaxy, some 12 million light years away, with its tendrils of hydrogen gas extending far out into space. Edge on galaxies, face on galaxies, merging galaxies, galaxies ever more distant as far as we can see. All this talk of light years, but what is a light year? How far is it, really? A light year is simply the distance travelled by light in one Earth year. The speed of light is about 300,000 kilometers per second, and an Earth year is about 32 million seconds. So, a light year is roughly nine and a half trillion kilometers, or six trillion miles. An awfully long way, and that's just one of them. Current estimates put the edge of the visible universe at 46 billion light years from Earth. 46 billion light years. That kind of distance is almost impossible to imagine. But how much further does it go on? And if it stops, what's on the other side? 